Taylor Swift. The singer with a big reputation in the music industry is, according to Forbes, worth an estimated $570 million. And with ERA's forecast to become the highest grossing tour of all time, the singer could considerably add to her net worth. So how did she get here? 53% of the adults in the United States considered themselves to be Taylor Swift fans, and 16% considered themselves to be avid Swifties. For Swift, that translates into record sales. Record-breaking record sales. Her 10th studio album, Midnights, released in October 2022, sold 1.6 million albums in its first week, according to Universal Music. That makes her the one and only artist to ever have five albums sell over 1 million copies in its first week. The resurgence of vinyl records has also played a role. In 2022, vinyls outsold CDs for the first time since 1987. Taylor's album Midnights sold 575,000 vinyls in its first week. A typical stream generates well under a penny in revenue from the streaming service that the stream originates on, somewhere, somewhere between a quarter and three quarters of a penny for all royal tours and all participants in that income stream. When you sell a vinyl record today, which at retail costs 20 to $30, well, you can imagine that the numbers are much better on a per unit basis, certainly than, than a stream. Still, streaming has significantly contributed to Taylor's wealth. According to Universal, the singer has 36.6 billion combined streams of her music. But there was a time when streaming services and Taylor were on rocky ground. From 2014 to 2017, Swift boycotted Spotify, removing all of her music from the platform. In 2015, Swift wrote an open letter to Apple, objecting to the company's decision to not pay artists streaming royalties during the three-month Apple Music trial period. Apple, to their credit, came back and said, you're right, we've changed our mind about this. And we will pay artists for the use of music during the trial period. When her album Midnight's released, it became Spotify's most streamed album in a single day, and also broke the record for the most streamed artist in a single day on Spotify. Money from music streams and sales doesn't just go to the artist. In 2022, Swift generated close to 3% of Universal Music's annual revenue, or $230 million in sales for the biggest music label in the world, according to JP Morgan. In every piece of music that you hear, there are two copyrights involved. The copyright in the underlying musical composition, the song itself, that's where songwriters and music publishers live. Once the song is made into a sound recording, that's usually where the record company and the performer live. Typically, record labels own the masters of a song or the original recording. That means the labels keep the fee for master recording use every time a song is streamed, performed on TV, or played in a movie. In 2019, Scooter Braun managing Ithaca Holdings bought Big Machine Label Group, which owned the masters to her recordings. He then spun off her masters. After the catalog sale had happened, Taylor would still be a uh, royalty participant as the artist who made the records, but the vast majority of that income would be going to the owner of the catalog, Ithaca Holdings. In 2018, Swift revealed on Instagram that she signed with Republic Records, a label under Universal Music Group. As part of the deal, Swift said she would own her future master recordings, and her contract with her previous home, Big Machine Label Group, allowed her to re-record her old songs. In most traditional artist agreements, most artists are barred for a really long period of time from re-recording their original works. Taylor, as her career became the fantastic juggernaut that it did, gained a tremendous amount of leverage in the deals that she was able to make while still on Big Machine. I'm not sure if the provisions allowed for her to re-record within a very short period of time after a sale or not, but uh, we do know that the period was very truncated, much more than it normally is for the conventional artist deal. So far, Swift has re-released her albums Fearless and Red as Taylor's version, both making it to the top of Billboard charts and selling more album units in the first week than their original releases. For any sales of these, Swift receives the artist and master's share of the song revenue. It was to Taylor's benefit to be able to maximize her income and give the fans 
you know, new versions of the songs that they knew and loved so much and have the income come directly to her or to the administrators who are managing the new records for her. Then, of course, there are Taylor Swift's tours. When the Taylor tour went on sale, it broke the internet and it broke Ticketmaster's system. There are very few artists in the world who face virtually infinite demand for seats to their concerts at almost any price. When Ticketmaster put the Taylor Swift tour on sale, essentially, there were three and a half billion requests for one and a half million seats. Tours are a huge moneymaker for artists. 85 or 90 percent or more of the face value of the ticket uh, goes to pay the artist, but not just the artist themselves. I mean, to put a big tour on the road is really expensive. So it pays for the artist and everyone in the artist's camp, from everybody you see on stage, to the people who move the equipment in and out, to the people who operate the sound and lights, to the people who drive the trucks and fly the planes around and negotiate the deals. But overwhelmingly, most of what the ticket price goes to is to pay for the artist. And the Eras tour could gross $728 million, according to concert data tracker Polestar, which also predicts that the tour could set the record for the highest grossing tour in a calendar year. So what keeps Taylor Swift fans in love with her music? Hundreds of millions of people around the world relate to her music. In a, in a powerful and profound and utterly relatable way. We're talking about a music creator and performer whose music changes the lives of the people who relate so closely to it. That makes Taylor utterly unique in the constellation of music makers, well-known and less well-known, over the last 10 years in particular.